Alright guys, New Age Nomads coming at you with another how-to video. Today we're going to teach you how to make our version of Mexican rice. What I got before you is a combination of different ingredients and seasonings that I have gathered from both sides of my family. They've taught me different ways into making the rice and I took what I thought was the best and the most healthiest way to make the rice and I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. The ingredients you're going to need is extra virgin olive oil, an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce, some parsley, pepper, and sea salt, one cup of rice, some chopped up onion also with some minced garlic in there one Roman tomato sliced up and also I'm gonna be using this raw chicken and boiling it up so I can get a nice chicken stock to add to my rice once I get starting to actually cook it so what I'm gonna do before everything gets started is I'm gonna use this to get the flavor that I want into my rice if you want to skip this step that's fine you can use a substitute which is chicken bouillon to get the flavor that we're looking for you can use about two teaspoons when it comes time to add water to the equation which I'll show you a little bit later you're also gonna need a pot in order to boil up your chicken and right here I'm using a three quart pan uh, the pan that you choose you want to make sure to have the matching lid this lid's gonna fit nice and snug so we can trap all the vapor and keep all the steam in to actually help cook the rice thoroughly if you don't have a matching lid you can use a plate that's larger than the actual pan itself Flip it upside down and it'll work just as good as a lid. Alright guys, before we can start making our Mexican rice, we need to make up our chicken broth. So, I'm going to go ahead and put some water, get my leg and thigh, and also my wing. Put about a quart of water in there. Bring this over to the stove. Set the stove to about medium. And go ahead and bring over some of my seasoning that I'll be using to season up my chicken. And what I'm going to put in the broth is going to be some pepper, some parsley, some of that onion that I cut up earlier with some minced garlic I minced up. Also, I'm going to add some sea salt. So after putting my seasoning in, I'm going to put my lid on. Wait for this to come to a boil. After it comes to a boil, I'm going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure the chicken's thoroughly cooked. If you wanted to skip this step, you could. You would just have to use chicken bouillon. You can put about three teaspoons into three cups of water and either boil it over the stove or put it into a plastic container and warm it up in the microwave. And it'll still give you somewhat the same flavor. I'm just going the more natural approach. After this is all done, we can start with browning our rice and continuing the process of making us some delicious Mexican rice. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for our chicken broth to brew up, we can get all our ingredients and put them to the side right where we're going to be cooking. We got our tomato sauce, we got our onion, we got our rice, tomato, olive oil, sea salt, pepper, and parsley. We got everything in a one-stop shop. So after the broth is done, we can go ahead and continue the process and get the job done a lot quicker and more efficiently. We're also only using an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. We're only going to use about 3 quarters of the can. You can use more or less depending on your taste buds. But the mixture that we have going on, 3 quarters works just fine. Alright, so we have the water boiling for quite some time. I'm going to shut the stove off and now we can continue on with making our Mexican rice. Now this tool right here is made out of bamboo and it works very, very well for making this type of rice. It's good for grabbing the edges, taking out all the rice that's sticking to the sides and kind of moving the rice around. And since it's made out of bamboo, it doesn't stain. We used to have a white set that was white plastic and it actually would stain really badly from the tomato sauce and the different flavorings. So bamboo is very nice to use when making rice. So we're going to go over here and set the stove to about 3 and 4. And in the meantime, we're going to grab some of this extra virgin olive oil and just coat the bottom. Just like that. We're going to let the pan heat up with the olive oil and then we're going to go ahead and apply the rice once it's at the right temperature. One way to check if the oil is ready for cooking, you can get a couple grains of rice and just throw them in there. And if you see them sizzling, then you know they're ready to go. But right now, we're not getting any sizzles. Nothing's showing that it's hot enough, so we're going to back off and come back when it's heated up a little bit more. After grabbing the grains of rice and doing the test, you can see that they're starting to sizzle. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cup of rice in there. And just move it around. I want all the oil that I put in to kind of soak into the rice. You can also turn up the heat a tad bit. I'm going to go just above four, which is just below medium. You want to stick around the pan when you decide to brown the rice. You don't want to be moving around or, or going and doing something. You want to make sure to be right by the stove and make sure that you brown it correctly. You don't want to burn it. So you can hear it sizzling and starting to cook at the very bottom. It helps if you pick up the pan itself and just kind of shake it and that'll help get all the rice leveled. When you have the rice mixing with the olive oil, you kind of want to make sure that there's enough oil that's on the rice itself. You want it to be not saturated, but kind of moist. 
You can see the rice is starting to get some color to it. Now you can add in your onion. I put big chunks of onion like this so that when I go to actually serve it, I can pull it out for people that are picky with onion. Because personally, I don't like uh, big chunks of onion in my stuff, or even little chunks, so I'll make them big enough to where I can see them and pull them out. Let it sit for a little bit, and then just keep moving around. This process is going to take you about, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes. Depending on how hot you have the uh, temperature itself. If you have it hotter, it'll brown faster, but you're in higher risk of actually burning the rice. I'm going slow and steady, making sure that it doesn't burn, and it comes out the best I can make it. So the rice is looking brown enough for me. So what I'm going to do is get my chicken broth that I have, or your chicken bouillon, or plain water, depending on what you want to do. Go over the pan and pour into my cup. So we got one cup here. For every cup of rice you cook, you need two parts water. So there's one. Go ahead and add my tomato sauce. I said I was using about three quarters of a can of that. Add my sliced tomato. Go ahead and mix this all around. When you're pouring all your ingredients in, you want to make sure not to splat or uh, burn yourself when you're doing that. Remember what I was telling you, you need two parts of water or chicken broth. So I'm going to come over here and get my other cup. You can see all that milky goodness that comes out of the chicken broth. It's going to go right into the nice rice that I'm cooking right here. Go ahead and pour some of that in. Not all of it, just some of it. You come in here with your spoon and just get a taste of what it's going to taste like. All I'm going to add into this is some more pepper. Tastes pretty good though with that chicken broth and everything. I like a lot of pepper so you can use more or less depending on your taste buds. It looked like a lot but once it's spread out through all the rice it's really not that much. Okay, So now that we got the flavor that we want we're going to make sure to put on our lid and also bring the heat to a simmer. You're going to want to get this dialed to about two or below two even. Now what you're waiting for is the rice to actually steam itself and cook thoroughly. You want to monitor this and make sure it has enough fluid in there so that it doesn't burn at the bottom. So right now I'll take a quick peek and you can see we have enough fluid in there. Now you want to leave it alone for about five minutes at a time because if you keep looking at it it's going to release the steam so you want to make sure to look at it as little as possible. So what's nice and convenient about these glass tops, you can actually see if you have enough water if you need to add some. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and come checking in about five minutes or less. Alrighty, so I'm going to take a peek at it. And you can see I'm losing some of my moisture from over here. And I haven't begun to pour in the second half of my cup. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some more of that. Remember I have said you need two parts of water or a liquid and one part rice. So I'm not even done with my second cup looking good go ahead and put the lid back on and if you don't have a lid you need to have something covering this so you need to make a lid that means a bigger plate or something you have to have a lid in order to make this type of rice so now I'm gonna come check on this in another four to five minutes add water if necessary it's about three minutes into it and I came and double checked on it to want it going dry go ahead and add the last of my cup it's always good to have a little bit more extra because depending on the temperature and also the elevation of which you live in, water might evaporate faster than other places. It's weird, but that's the way it works. Atmospheric pressure if you want to look it up. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water. So total amount of liquid, about two cups and a quarter. Now I'll let that steam up for approximately another probably five minutes and then come take a look. Okay, uh, it's been about three minutes. I say five minutes is always about three minutes, by the way. So, I'm going to come to the side and just kind of check out what's going on in my rice. And you want to go in here and you can, you can kind of tell by the way it looks, but it's always good to taste it. And you always want to feed the machine, you know what I mean? So just blow on it. Don't want to burn yourself because then it'll ruin the rest of your time eating. I know from experience, trust me. That's a really tasty rice. Now when you're tasting it, you're looking for any type of hard grains of rice. And I'm not tasting anything that's hard in there. It's all good. What I'm going to do now, after taste testing it and verifying by the way it looks, I can tell you that it's all cooked. So now it comes time to actually flipping it. You can go ahead and turn off the stove. Come in here with your tool, utensil, and just flip it over. You don't want to smash it. You just, just kind of want to roll it over itself. 
what this is going to do is share some of the wealth of the flavor. And you're looking at a finished product right here. You got the chunks of onion that I can take out easily. You got the chunks of tomato. Uh, the pepper is not overwhelming. It's actually kind of well distributed. It smells delicious. And it didn't burn at the bottom. Now what I can do is go ahead and take it off the heat. And bring over my rice that I just made. Grab a scoop. Add it to the rest of my dinner that I created. So after dishing it up, I got my Mexican rice, I got my beans, some cheddar cheese, I got my leg and thigh that I boiled up in order to make the broth for the rice, and I got a spinach flour tortilla along with a glass of milk. Go ahead and get a taste test. Get little beans in the equation there. Delicious. Homemade, and it took about approximately 20 minutes, and we're all set and done. Hope you guys learned something, and thank you for tuning in for another installment of New Age Nomads How-To Videos. Cheers.